Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, guys and girls. This is your host of, of Kingdom Talk, where we advance the kingdom of God one conversation at a time. I am your host, Mia Cohen. I am actually broadcasting out of Springboro, South Carolina. I'm a part of WYTV7, which is out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Let me go ahead and tell you about WYTV7, Christian Broadcasters Network. It's an awesome network. I'm so grateful to be a part of it. WITV7 is a nonprofit organization, and if you guys feel led in any way, shape, or form, we accept donations. There's no donation too small and definitely no donation too large, so please feel free. Whatever it is that the Lord lays on your heart, just feel free to donate. We will gladly appreciate it. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you all for tuning in on today. Today, I am so honored to have this awesome woman of God whom I have the joy of calling my little sister. We have today Minister Stephanie Walker. She is a U.S. Army servant. Um, this woman of God is passionate about everything that she does, and she has a strong passion for the youth. Um, I want you guys to just listen in to what it is that God has placed in her heart. She's on fire, and God has given her a charge for such a time as this, I would relate to her as being the Esther for the youth. So Amen. we want to give you a warm welcome, Miss Minister Stephanie Walker. How you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How are Amen. you? Amen. Amen. It's good um, to be able to sit down with you and talk kingdom. God is so awesome. Um, Amen. Yeah, we're not going to prolong, but we're going to move right on into it. It's so much that I have just on my plate to ask you is so much that is, you know, that I want to talk about, especially concerning the youth, because whether people realize it or not, this Joshua generation is the generation that set forth to take us on. So we have to reach them and we have to reach them where they are and we have to see and do what it is we have to do to be able to captivate, captivate them because we don't want them to be lost. Amen. 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 So I'm going to go ahead and move in to it. Um, I want to ask you um, a question, and this is a question that I hear a lot of times concerning the youth, um, about fitting in or about conforming. And I wanted to ask you, just you based on the youth and um, even those who are out there in Kansas that you network with, and why is it so hard for the young people, whether it be teenagers or young adults, to be so consistent in their Christian walk? Um, can you repeat that question for me? It got interrupted. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. I was asking, why is it so hard for teenagers and young adults to be consistent in their Christian walk without conforming or without feeling like they have to dummy down or, or feeling like they can't be bold about who they are? Why is it so hard for them to be consistent in who they are pertaining to their Christian walk? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so I feel like personally, uh, we live in a generation where uh, we follow a lot of trends. Whatever is cool, what's hot, what's, uh, you know, trending at the time. So that's what we're going to uh, conform to. I feel like uh, just in general, um, we we belittle God uh, more than what we should. And it's sad to say that, but uh, we don't give God enough credit. Um, where it's due, we don't give God enough acknowledgement in, in our generation, in our age group. We don't we don't take the time to actually sit aside and acknowledge him for who he really is. So when you see other people who are going to church and doing what they're supposed to do to enhance their walk, it becomes something that's unknown. It's it's something that's uh um uh, it's what's what's the word I'm looking for? It's um it's not common, it's foreign. It's something, it becomes something that's foreign. Okay. So it's not, it's not a trend. You see what I'm saying? So I feel like um, nowadays we, we looking for the new best thing. And most of the time, God and Jesus and reading the word, going to church is not always it. Okay. That's good. That's good. Um, um, I, I've learned um, a lot of times is that this younger generation, they want everything microwave. Oftentimes, yeah. they it, but they don't want to do what it takes to get it or to keep it. And so you have to stay consistent. That's why I was so um, prompt on using the word consistent because sometimes we have a zeal. I remember when I got saved, I got saved so young. 
and there were a few people that got saved along with me. And I remember the beginning seal to where every time I went somewhere, I was quoting scriptures and everything. But I also knew, um, you know, and the people would be like, well, I see you're growing in Christ. And I also knew right then and there that the very thing that it took to begin to feed my spirit was the very thing that I needed to continue to feed my mm. spirit. So I took it upon myself. Um, I took that charge upon myself once I gave my life to Christ to do what it is that I needed to do to stay in a consistent place with him because I didn't want to weave and out, you know, and see out and everything. I had already made the conscious decision. I must have been about 23, 24. And I was just like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it cold turkey. And it wasn't easy, but it was yeah. worth it. on this Christian walk. Consistency is the key. You have to stay consistent. And I didn't do... Um, what the normal kids did because I was different. I made the decision and I, and I didn't want to keep breaking God's heart. So that's where, yeah. that's where it was, you know, it hurt me to hurt him. So yeah. it's very good when you said that it's not, not, you know, when you used to work foreign, uh, oftentimes if it's blue on over here, then people have a tendency of going to blue. If it's red, they have a tendency of going to red, but we have to stay consistent um, to whatever it is that God has placed in our hands to do and stay consistent in him. Amen. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you another thing, um, cause, because peer pressure, you remember back in the, you know, 80s, early 90s, we used peer mm. pressure so much, you know, peer pressure, peer pressure, but peer pressure now is on a whole nother level. I mean, some, I think about some of the things that I dealt with and some of the things this generation deal with now. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm trying to figure out how would I even handle that? So I wanted to ask you, how is it? Um, the youth today, how, and, and I want to um, want your advice on this, mm. how can they witness to their friends, still be true to themselves, and, and actually be received? Mm. Change of circle. That's the only way. I feel like if you're around people who are toxic for you, you're never going to grow, progress, or become who. And I, I heard a saying today, in order for someone to become aligned, one must become alignable. So in order to, to be able to be changed, you got to change your circumstances, the things that you, you're you around. So I feel like, and, and that's a daily battle for myself. You'll befriend somebody and realize that walk with God isn't exactly what you, you know, thought it was. And so at the end of the day, you're deep, so deep into a friendship that now it's up to whether you're, you're making choices between, am I going to keep this relationship with God or am I going to keep this relationship with this physical friend that I have? And that can become hard because you don't been friends with this person for so long. But then at the same time, you ask the person, well, how long have you been a Christian? And they'll, they'll tell you all their lives, but you know, your walk doesn't include to say so. So it, it, it can become hard when it comes to peer pressure because you want to, to keep the friends that are around you. And that's something I had to acknowledge in the season that I'm in, that it, it has to, I have to get to a state of uncomfortableness and my loneliness in order for God to be able to use me and make me feel comfortable again. So being lonely is one of the things that we fear. And walking with God, most of the time, sometimes it can be lonely. And I think that's what we fear. Yeah, you know, oftentimes mom will say being called ain't cute. You know, she says that yeah. a lot. And in actuality, it is the truth because we think about it, you know, oh, I'm this, oh, I'm that. But sometimes we, we count up the cost and oftentimes we miscount, you know, and sometimes we count up the cost and we was like, oh, I didn't under, I didn't know that um, um, being unpopular would be part of counting up the cost. I didn't know that the people that I love, you know, would begin to isolate themselves away from me. I didn't mm. know that because of what the Lord placed in me, I would have to begin to isolate myself from the people that I love. Or I'll have to begin to isolate myself from doing the things that I want to do. It is. Um, oftentimes it can be hard, but when you keep your eye on the prize, which is Jesus, it, it's not easy. And I tell people that all the time, but it is worth it. Um, one of the things that you said, and, and it stuck out when you was like, change a circle. That was yeah. so, that, that, I mean, it was almost as if you could just kind of like, you know, people say, you could take up the offering right now. That was huge. Because sometimes we don't realize that we are what we eat. And, yeah. And, and, and in actuality, a lot of people may not know this, but it's the truth. You only attract yourself. 
Yeah. So some people will say stuff like, you know, I keep going in a merry ground. I keep meeting these friends or these type of friends. Or I'm keeping around. But we have to also begin to do inventory to check and see what is it that we're doing. You know, are we setting ourselves up? Are we giving off um, things to say that we're, you know, vulnerable or, or insecure? You know, sometimes we have to check that because people pick up on those things and you'll begin to have a pattern before you know it. It's almost like a woman that um, stays in abusive relationships. We can yeah. look at the person all the time, but you have to, at some point in time, you like, I mean, you know, do you just find men that want to hit on you? You have to see what it is that you're giving off. And so when you said change your circle, that was huge because sometimes we want it, but we don't want it enough to change the people that we're around. Mm. Because, you know, we love them. And that's just the truth. But be, being called really ain't cute. Lord have mercy. Yeah, it, I, I was watching. Uh, it's a there's a pastor that I follow on Facebook. I think his name is Ed Centernoli or something like that. And he was preaching yesterday, and he said that every season that God puts you in has an expiration date. But it's up to you whether you elongate that expiration date or not. So it's just like sickness, walking into sickness and God saying, okay, this is the expiration date on that. But if you're still constantly claiming that sickness, you'll never be healed. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a mind game. It is. It is. It is. It is. It's some. It, it is. And you have to have a. You have to have a made a made up mind to say, okay, this is it. And so you are right. Everything has an expiration date. Even ourselves, we have yeah. an expiration date to where when we leave this place, we go to be with the Lord. You know, everything has an expiration date. So there are some that are, that will start with you, but they won't finish with you. Not saying where this Amen. good, bad, or indifferent, but we have to look at the bigger picture. What is the Lord's will? Okay. So this yeah. is good stuff. This is good stuff. I wanted to ask you, being young and yourself, you were called um, to come into the ministry um, at a very young age. How do you know as a, a, a young people, how do they know if, if they're called? How, how do they know if they're calling to the ministry? What are the things that they begin to look at? I mean, is it, you know, or, or, or you can only speak from your experience, but I'm pretty sure that you have other friends that are in the faith. So can you explain that to me? Certain things that will begin to happen that some of the youth that are listening today will be like, well, you know, that I'm going through that very same thing. And they don't know that the Lord is transitioning them to mm. walk or ministry. You know, I, they may not understand why they up at 5 a.m. But because you know those signs and you know how mm. they you, you can help them through it. So I wanted you to talk to talk a little bit about that. I had to, uh, I would say I had to learn that. And, p and speaking personally, I had to learn that the hard way. I really had to, to learn to, to want to accept God. And then I had to learn to want to hear from God. And then I had to learn to want to be changed by God. So uh, I really do. I give all glory and honor to my church home because I feel like without a stable church home, without a stable covering, you know, a lot of things and foundations and uh, a lot of seeds that they sold into me would have not been possible. And I'm not saying that I couldn't have done it by myself, but at the same time, they, they planted a lot, a lot of extraness in me that I probably wouldn't have been able to get if I was not covered. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. um, just spending that time with my mother that season with her showing me how to pray, you know, the, the right and wrong ways to pray, just being able to have a conversation mm -hmm. with God. Sometimes nine, out of 10, uh, some teenagers don't even know that you can just sit down and just start talking. And then after a while you're talking, your conversation with, with God eventually turns into prayer, you know, cause God will start to adjust your, your habits and the way you pray into where it is prayer. So it, it just takes that time. You have to acknowledge that within yourself if that's something that you really want to to do and for me I just I knew it was something different because hearing from God for me is, is, is a sense of being at peace you know mm -hmm. if if I know that okay this is uh something I feel that I've heard from God I always give ask God for confirmation and affirmation you know so God come 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 to me in some um, sense and form shape and, and confirm it for me and lo and behold, he'll come back and conform it. And some people will try to twist the word and make it seem like, well, that's just coincidence. You know what I'm saying? But it, it is what it is. And we were in uh, Romans chapter 14 yesterday where the judgment becomes a sin, where you can't take away somebody else's, you know, their satisfactions and what they ask, mm -hmm. you know, like what they acknowledge to be God. You know what I'm saying? Because now you're you're judging and now you, you've, uh, you've sinned yourself. You know what I'm saying? So the, I took a lot of that as well. So whatever way a person feels as if they're receiving God, 
let them receive, you know what I'm saying? So they can better their relationship. Don't take away what, what somebody has. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's personal. Basically, just to sum it up, your relationship with God and the way he deals with you or the way that yeah. you feel like he's pulling you into the ministry or calling you to um, hiring God or, or giving you a particular anointing, it's personal because the way it happened with you may not happen with someone else. And like you said, we can't necessarily, you know, judge that. I know, you know, people say, well, I was looking for a certain look or whatever, but no, you need to look for the spirit of God because you just may not get what it is that you, that you're, that you want to see through mm. me, through the, through the next person, but it does not mean that God isn't working. You see what I'm saying? So basically it's personal and it's a relationship and it's not something that, um, you know, that people have a desire to do. It's something that God has called you to do. And when he calls you to it, you have the choice to accept it or not. And so that was, that was huge right there. I really, really, you know, wanted to hear from you concerning that. Um, and I want to, I want to tag on to that, but uh, I want to also say that it's not glitz and glamorous. I feel like sometimes people go looking for how God's going to send a sign. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like if it's not in this certain box wrapped up like this with this type of bow on it, then it's not sent from God. You see you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes people go searching and yearning for a specific thing and they miss out on exactly what oh, God absolutely. was trying to show you. Um, when it comes to, that was huge right there. Um, when it comes to the things of God, when we want the things of God, we actually have to make room for them. And we can't say anything like, well, I only got room for corn, um, beef, and mm -hmm. cheese because he may say, I'm coming in okra, I'm coming in cream potatoes and everything. You just have to make, make sure... Um, that you made room for however it is that he come, because like you said, you could be looking for it to come in a particular way, but that's not the way God comes, and you'll miss the move of God because of what you felt like it was supposed to be, or because of yeah. how it felt like it was supposed to look. We do that all the time, even in before when you were talking about judging. I see a lot of the youth, and they have skinny jeans, or you know, they may have on um, particular clothes and everything, and some of us sometimes, you know, feel like maybe they should have on this and that. And I'm not, I'm not saying that that's not true, but what we have to do concerning the youth, we have to meet them where they are. Yeah. As long as a soul is saved, God really doesn't care if their genes are holy. Our opportunity, you know, we can't miss out on the opportunity of bringing them into, in, bringing them into the church and having to, having them to accept Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. And once we get them in, then God will begin to clean them up. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Full-fledged, you know, like that. So if they're used to wearing, you know, a particular type of clothing and everything, once the transition is made, they're not going to feel comfortable in that very thing. But our job is to pull them in and to show them love because the Word of God said, with thy love and kindness have I drawn thee. He didn't say with judgment I draw you. Mm. To be chastised that I draw you or to reject uh, or rejection I'll draw you. He said with thy love and kindness. So in all things, even in correction, you have to make sure that you do it in love, which moves me into my next question too, because mm. I've been hearing this a lot from some of the youth. They'll say, well, why does, why, you know, if, God loves me or if, 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 if God, um, you know, loves me and wants the best for me, then why did my life turn out like this? Or, you know, why did my mom leave me? Or why did my dad, mm. you know, they have a lot of questions and they equate that they equate their situation with the Ooh. level, of, with the level of love that God has for them. And, you know, and when they're young, it's just like in the book of James, when he said, um, how could you tell a person when they say they're hungry? Well, you know, you you walk, you go up to them and say, God bless you. You know, you're in the book of James, it tells us you're supposed to go and provide food. You know, yeah. you give them what it is that they need. So a lot of times the youth will equate their, their circumstances or their situation with the measure of love. And in, in that instance, you can't really do that because we suffer for righteous sakes. And there's a such thing called life. Which, which to a lot of us, you know, isn't fair. We all go through things, you know, you and I have been through things, but we still know that God loves us and we still know that he's kind. I want you to talk to um, 
some of the youth and give them some advice when they feel like um, they've been dealing with trials and tribulations and why did God allow this to happen and why did God allow this to happen in our lives? Wow, that's you, you, you pinning me up there. Um, I, I go off of my, my personal, as always. Um, growing up, I was in a foster ch- um, the foster system for a while. I didn't, got, I didn't get adopted until I was nine years old. And um, I went from home to home, and I was, I was abused. And, you know, you know you'll, you'll look at it and be like, well, these ain't my parents. So you rebel. You know, you got this attitude. You got a grudge against the world. You know, this and the third. And honestly, just not too long ago, I, I recently ran across a, a, a letter that I had wrote to my family, kind of like a little suicidal letter that I had just given up, you know, and it, and I think God allowed me to stumble upon it to show my progression on where I came from, where my mind was at, you know, to allow me to think that I even got that low and to show my elevation from where I was to where I am. You know, he, he just kind of, and I cried because I was like, dang, I had to think about the fact that if I were, if I didn't hold on, then where would my life have been? You know, I feel like I would have been in darkness. I feel like, you know, there's there's not a lot of options. And I had to I had to read, I had to dig into my word and find a solution. I had to find a solution for the problems and the troubles that I was going through. Now a lot of times out of ten, people be like, Well, you're not relating to uh well why my mother and my father left me, this and the third. At the end of the day, it was already written. Sometimes and I have to learn that the hard way, that it does not take a mother and a father who bir- physically birthed you to be a mother and a father to you. And I I apologize to my mother, my, my, my adopted mother all the time because I had to realize that she stepped in and, and took on the role that my mother could not be. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody is not granted that way. But you got to understand that even if no one physically steps in, God is already there. You know what I'm saying? So I, I had to learn and establish that within my heart. That's something that you got to accept within yourself. You know, don't make excuses for what somebody else did. You know, be better. Absolutely. Absolutely. We take lemons and we make lemonade because let's be honest, everybody's been dropped. Everybody's been left on the steps. Everybody at some point has been abandoned, but we take what it is that we went through and we empower ourselves to be better. So we can, we can actually, you know, lend a helping hand to someone else that has been through. You know, this is my favorite saying, we become so that others become. And yeah. God God has placed people in our lives um, all the time. And you and I both know God has already, he's done that with us. He's placed people there. No, it wasn't a physical birth, but guess what? Blood couldn't be any closer. You know, yeah. we came straight through the spiritual canal. And so with that, you know, we look at it and God still gave us what we needed. But guess what? We even got more. We got bonus. So yeah, we have to see that for what it is because there's some people out here that really didn't have the opportunity um, that you and I had for someone to come along and slip into that position. Yeah. Some of them are still out there and they feel like they're motherless and they feel like they're fatherless and they feel like they didn't have anyone else. But the, by the grace of God and the word of God tell us he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And so we have to feast our eyes on the greater calling, you know, and yeah. that's, you got through it. The fact is, is that you're still standing and you have done, oh my gosh, I can't even begin to just like tell you what it is that you've done and how you've inspired me being as young as you are. You have really, really (laughs) excelled above and beyond. God is doing so many great things in your life. And so the devil got a black eye because, you know, he really, it didn't work. It really didn't work. You turned around and you took lemons and made lemonade. And now you just, now you got them in a pitch and you able to pour it out. Your cup running over. You're very blessed. Hallelujah. Yeah. And, and I feel like it, 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 it's foggy when you're in the situation, but you got to use your trials and your tribulations in order to make a great testimony. How can you preach and try to get someone else through their storms if you've never been through nothing? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you got to go through things. Sometimes you got to lose a child. You got to lose your mother, your father. You got to be homeless. You got to you gotta go through certain things in order to have a story to tell. Because at the end of the day, you want to give God glory. He wants his name stamped on every situation. So if you've never been through nothing, how can you tell somebody how good God is? You That's know what right. I'm saying? Right. Oftentimes we look at the situation and we say, 
well, I went through this and I went through that. It's not to, it's not to look at the situation and cry and, and cry. And God doesn't bring us out of um, tumultuous situations like that for us to weep over um, what happened to us. He brings us out so we can rejoice in the fact that, you know, yeah. he, he was still there with us and that we're made it over, you know, that we've made we've made it over, you know, that's how we're supposed to look at it, you know, because sometimes even in our trials and tribulations and even in us giving testimonies, we can stay stuck, you know, you know, sometimes people just stay stuck, it can be 10, 15 years, and they're still talking about what happened to them at six years old, and they'll still cry when they talk mm. about it. being in that place to say, you know what, I graduated from that. Now, because God has allowed me to go through it and God has allowed me to make it through it and I'm still hearing my sound, sound mind, body, soul, and spirit, I'm going to take the charge to help somebody else, you know. So that's why I always say we become so that others become. Um, this, this, is, this is so good. This is very good. I but that's to unforgiveness. That's unforgiveness in their heart. Yes. You got to forgive yourself. That's and, right. and, and, and in order to move on, but you got to understand that God already forgave you. Some people get stuck on that too. They, 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 they dwell on a situation because they feel like, Oh, well, I'll never be forgiven for this. God already forgave you. Now is the hard part is to forgive yourself and forgive the person who done wrong to you. That's, That's the part true. where you got to get over it. Cause you'll, you'll never move past it. Mm -mm. The biggest, the, this is the, um, every time I begin to talk about forgiveness, these are the two things that I say. Um, and I've all, I've been doing this for years. Forget unforgiveness. It's mm. like you drinking poison and waiting for mm -hmm. the other person to die. Oh, that's how unforgiveness is. This is if you're drinking mm. poison and you're waiting for the other person to die. Also, forgiveness is not for the person. Forgiveness Come on. is for you. Because when you have unforgiveness harboring your heart, you know what it does? It yeah. puts you holy alliance with a person it puts you in a relationship with the person and i'm gonna tell you why you know how when you see a person and you really like have love for them you be like oh my gosh there's the baby oh my gosh there's my mom you get so excited when you see it that that's a um that's a holy um relationship that's yeah. a holy um, that's something that's beautiful where relationships can be holy and unholy and an unholy uh -huh. relationship when you have unforgiveness in your heart, it's when your day can be good and you see that one person mm -hmm. that literally destroy your whole day. That's a relationship. And to be honest with you, I had to tell myself plenty of times there's nobody worth my happiness. And so Come one on. of the things I do whenever people always defend me or whenever people do me wrong, the first thing that I do while it's fresh. I always drop on my knees, which shows a sign of humility, and I tell the Lord, I forgive them. I say, continue yeah. to my heart towards them. They're not perfect. I understand what they did was wrong, but God, I place forgiveness. I, that's the first thing I do. I mean, sometimes I do that before I even, you know, pray about the situation. I always say, for, you know, put forgiveness in my heart because I refuse to be done wrong and still stay stuck. If that's just yeah. Not it's just not going to happen. Um, yeah. My last thing I wanted to talk to you about is um, for the youth, I wanted to ask you um, to explain to them what does having a relationship with God really means. You know, sometimes we have youth and we've seen it. They've been at funerals or they're at church and because everybody else is coming up, you have a slew of youth coming up and they want to give their life to Christ and they'll leave out oh and they'll, they'll do the same thing. Or you may go to church with somebody and because you go up to, to get prayer or go up to give your life to Christ and they're with you, they'd be like, well, I went up with her and you know, there's no transformation in this nothing dealing with the heart condition, but I want you being in the place in the position, being that you were called to the ministry very early. I want you to explain to the youth what, um, what does having a relationship with God really mean and how important it is mm. to have a relationship with God. Oh, see, that's something I, I'm, I'm still learning. That's something I had to learn over time. See, when I answered my call into the ministry, I didn't know what it was like to completely have a real foundation of a relationship with God. But I had to get inside the word. And I think what, what God did was force me, force me to his word. Because I would find myself where before I used to keep my Bible open. 
but then days my Bible would close and it stay closed for months on end. And then God would redirect my attention and be like, well, why are your Bible closed? It's been closed about four or five months now. You ain't opened it up. You ain't read it. You ain't skimmed over. You ain't see what the pages feel like. You know, he redirects you. And then sometimes that can come in forms of conviction. Things that you used to do for God that you no longer do anymore. You know, it just, just certain behaviors. You know what I'm saying? So um, what I had to learn was who, who God was. I had to learn that God is every and anything that you want him to be. You know, whatever you are missing, wherever you're weak, wherever you're, you have holes, you have emptiness, God fills. He is everything. And then I had to learn the, his purpose in my life. You know, I'm, I'm saying, and that's what I'm still learning. You know, I, I had to stay in my word to be fed because if you don't, you're separating yourself from that connection with God. You'll never learn who he is and what he's capable of if you don't stay in his word, if you don't stay in his church. So I had to learn that the hard way because the further away you get in that connection, the further and the harder it is to hear from God. And he'll show his stuff to you in general. He'll just show, show his stuff to you on his own. Amen. Again, guys, this is Mia Cohen. I'm out of Charlotte, North Carolina, but I'm also on WITV7, which is Christian Broadcasters Network. Please do me a favor, guys. Go and make a donation. You will not be disappointed. I will be remiss to tell about the gift God has placed in my life with WITV7. Um, Minister Walker, before we go ahead and conclude this interview, I want you to Give me some last advice, last minute advice for the youth, but I also need you to give me your information if someone wants to reach you or if they want you to come to a conference to speak at a um, preaching engagement. Can you give us um, your way of contact, whether it be via email or social media? Um, so I'm always on Facebook. That's basically my only means of trend, um, social media. So I'm on Stephanie Walker. You can find me on Facebook. Um, also, you can email me at stephaniewalker0095 at gmail.com. And for any closing remarks, I would have to say just keep pushing, keep striving, and keep wanting a, a deeper relationship with God. The more that you yearn for it, the more you grow. Amen. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you. I'm so excited about what happened tonight. You guys be blessed. Once again, this is Mia Cohn, your host of Kingdom Talk, where we advance the kingdom of God one conversation at a time. You guys be blessed.